Welcome to the Grow Your Own Cycle 6 webinar. This webinar is for those interested in applying for the Cycle 6 grant or learning more about how the grant works. My name is Beth Burkhart. I'm the director of Grow Your Own. I am joined by Ruth Ye, the Teacher Pathways Specialist, who will also be narrating throughout today's webinar. This webinar will help participants describe the goals and purpose of the grant program, locate the grant materials, and identify and locate important grant information. This webinar will address the following topics, the grant purpose and goals, an overview of the grant, including the different pathways, eligible applicants, funding, the application and review process, and frequently asked questions. You may refer to the slide numbers to view specific parts of the webinar. We want to start off by grounding ourselves in the purpose of the Grow Your Own grant. Grow Your Own supports districts to build strong, stable, and diverse pipelines of teachers from within their own communities. The grant intends to address teacher shortages, close demographic gaps between students and teachers, and build interest in the teaching profession among high school students. Districts should consider how Grow Your Own could fit into their long-term talent management strategy. Grow Your Own is based on the idea that if districts implement it as part of a robust and long-term talent management strategy that's based in a strong foundation, that uses high quality resources, and that is effectively managed throughout the project, then districts will develop a strong, stable, and diverse teacher pipeline from their communities and their student populations. We're now gonna go into an overview of the Grow Your Own grant. Before applying for the Grow Your Own grant, districts should consider the following questions to see if Grow Your Own is a good fit for the LEA. Consider if your LEA is looking to focus on long-term talent management. Do you already offer education and training programs of study or are you interested in starting up an education and training program? And finally, does your LEA already have a pool of paraprofessionals, long-term substitutes, or instructional aides who are interested in and able to become full-time certified teachers within two years? Grow Your Own supports district's talent management strategies with two distinct pathways. Applicants may choose to apply for one or both pathways. Pathway 1, the High School Education and Training Pathway, aims to build interest and develop the foundational knowledge and skills of teaching with high school students through high quality education and training courses. Districts are encouraged and supported to offer these courses for dual credit, which provides additional incentives for students to pursue a career in teaching. Teachers of dual credit education and training courses must hold a master's degree in an education related field. Pathway 2 supports the transition of paraprofessionals, instructional aides, and long-term substitute teachers to full-time certified teacher roles. Paraprofessionals, instructional aides, and substitute teachers are connected to and representative of the communities in which they work and often live. By providing candidates with financial support to complete a bachelor's degree and teacher certification, this pathway removes barriers for already dedicated staff members to advance their careers. These next slides will provide more information about Pathway 1, the High School Education and Training Pathway. Districts that participate in Pathway 1 receive support to build a pipeline of future educators from their high school students. In this pathway, districts implement a high school education and training program of study and participate in a career and technical student organization. District leaders, counselors, and education and training teachers attend the Grow Your Own Summer Institute to help them build a strong foundation for implementing the grant. For districts that do not already use high quality education and training instructional materials, the TEA has developed a high quality TEKS aligned curriculum, which is available to districts at no cost. LEAs receive implementation supports and provide feedback through surveys and focus groups if requested. Finally, Districts receive support to implement field-based courses that require transportation to and coordination with elementary and middle schools. This slide outlines the allowable use of funds for Pathway 1. The full list can be viewed on page 19 of the program guidelines. 
Allowable use of funds for Pathway 1 includes stipends for education and training teachers, education and training field site teachers, travel to the Grow Your Own Summer Institute, student transportation to and from their field sites, and costs associated with the implementation and growth of education and training programs. This table outlines the major grant milestones for Pathway 1. By the end of May, districts should identify, submit the names, and receive a letter of commitment from the education and training teachers who will receive a stipend through the grant. Additionally, districts who plan to offer the courses for dual credit will need a signed letter of commitment from the Partnering Institute of Higher Education, or IHE. In June, Grow Your Own hosts the annual Summer Institute. Required attendees for the Institute include education and training teachers, campus principals, college and career counselors, and LEA grant managers. Lastly, throughout the year, education and training teachers who receive a stipend will participate in collaborative online communities to support implementation. Selecting teachers who will lead the education and training courses is an important part of the success of your program. Education and training teachers are models for great practices in classroom management, building positive classroom environments, instructional planning and delivery, and assessment. These teachers should demonstrate a passion for education and for leading the next generation of teachers. To be eligible for the stipend, teachers must hold a standard certificate or life teacher certificate in the state of Texas. Teachers must have been employed as a teacher within the LEA during the 22-23 school year. Most districts recommend that the teacher have at least three years experience teaching within the district. To offer classes for dual credit, the teacher must hold a master's degree with at least 18 credit hours in education. Dual credit teachers must also be approved by the IHE as an instructor for dual credit. This chart outlines the courses required by the grant for the Education and Training Program of Study, as well as the recommended grade level and any recommended or required prerequisites. The TEA provides high-quality TEKS-aligned curriculum for these three courses at no cost. Pathway 1 participants will receive supports throughout the grant cycle. Resources, including high-quality curriculum and implementation guides, are aimed to help districts launch and develop a successful and sustainable education and training program. Use of the implementation guide is optional. The curriculum is required for districts that do not already have a high-quality education and training curriculum. Education and training teachers will provide feedback through participation in surveys and focus groups. The TEA also supports the development of strong education and training programs through the annual Summer Institute and ongoing implementation support for teachers. We will now switch gears and talk about Pathway 2, or the transition of candidates to full-time teaching roles. As previously mentioned, Pathway 2 of the Cycle 6 Grow Your Own grant focuses on the recruitment and support of candidates such as paraprofessionals, instructional aides, and long-term substitutes. The intention of this grant is to provide such eligible candidates with financial relief during the grant timeline, as this is a possible barrier to degree completion and certification for many that are interested in becoming a teacher. If awarded, LEAs must meet the grant requirements listed here and also outlined in the program guidelines. LEAs must, for instance, allow reasonable paid release time and schedule flexibility so that candidates are able to meet the program requirements during the grant timeline. LEAs must also manage a certification-only candidate cohort in collaboration with a high-quality EPP partner. LEAs must also have their stipend recipients participate in surveys and, if requested, by TEA focus groups. Lastly, LEAs must be able to have their candidates hired and retained upon successful completion as long as there are positions that are appropriate and available to the certification area for that candidate. Allowable uses of Pathway 2 funding include the following. Candidate stipends to cover tuition, fees, and living expenses that are incurred within the grant timeline. Within fees, 
Such costs could include candidate certification exam and test preparation costs. Finally, substitute teachers for providing candidate stipend recipients with release time in order for them to meet those grant requirements. For a full list of these allowable uses of funds, please see pages 19 through 20 of the program guidelines. Some grant milestones to highlight here include that by May 31st of 2023, LEAs must be able to establish a signed letter of commitment or MOU for eligible candidates who receive a stipend, as well as for their partnering EPP. Also by May 31st, LEAs must be able to submit names of all the grant funded candidates to TEA. Lastly, by fall of 2025, candidates must be able to serve as full-time teachers of record within the district. Please note that while these are the grant milestones that we highlight here, this is not a full list to capture all of the milestones that are necessary for program implementation. In order to be eligible for receiving a grant stipend, Pathway 2 candidates must meet certain eligibility requirements. All candidates, including those earning teacher certification only and those earning both a degree and teacher certification, must meet the following. All candidates must not already be certified or be a teacher of record, must be able to serve as a teacher of record starting in the fall of 2025, must have been employed as a paraprofessional instructional aide or long-term substitute within the eligible LEA during the 2022 to 2023 school year. Given that we are growing teachers from within our own communities and such candidates will already have previous experience working at the district. Lastly, candidates must have previously served in a role in which most of their time was spent supporting teachers in an instructional setting as such candidates will have experience being able to work with students. Some specific eligibility requirements include that candidates earning teacher certification must already hold a bachelor's degree and be able to enroll in the accredited EPP program that the district partners with and be able to earn a teacher certification within the grant timeline. Candidates that earn both a degree and teacher certification must have a minimum of 75 credit hours towards their bachelor's degree, which also lends to the ability to graduate with the degree and earn teacher certification by the grant end date or April 30th of 2025. LEAs are responsible for ensuring that all candidate stipend recipients meet these eligibility requirements and can meet grant assurances. Such grant assurances should be outlined within the letter of commitment or MOU as described in the program guidelines. Throughout the grant timeline, there are certain supports that LEAs can receive for Pathway 2. TEA will be providing implementation resources, such as an implementation guide, which will be optional to use, gathering and sharing feedback from candidate focus groups and surveys, and onboarding and check-ins in order to support districts with planning and implementation. LEAs may also receive supports directly from their accredited partner EPP. It is important for LEAs to consider how these supports will be helpful to leverage and establishing a relationship with a high quality EPP, especially for the role that they will play in a collaborative certification candidate cohort and ongoing support throughout the grant. LEAs should consider and describe the nature of the partnership in the required letter of commitment or MOU with their partner EPP. Moving on into now talking about who is eligible to apply for this Cycle 6 Grow Your Own grant. Eligible applicants for this grant include LEAs and ESCs. For LEAs, they must be committed to meeting the grant requirements and may apply for either or both pathways individually or as part of a Shared Service Arrangement, or SSA. On the other hand, ESCs may only apply as part of an SSA. EPPs are not eligible to apply for this grant. As a quick note, past recipients of the Grow Your Own grant are eligible to apply. So if an LEA has already been awarded Grow Your Own grant funding in cycles 1 through 5, 
they are eligible to apply for this cycle as well. Pathway 2 applicants must select an accredited partner EPP from the accreditation status list that is posted with the grant materials on the TEA grant opportunities page. This list includes all accredited EPPs that are not under an active SBEC order or otherwise sanctioned by SBEC as of August 1st. You may refer to page 5 of the program guidelines for a full description around eligible applicants. As mentioned, LEAs and ESCs can apply for this grant as part of an SSA for either or both pathways. Keep in mind that those interested in applying as part of an SSA must consider these parameters. For both pathways, each member LEA can have up to two stipend recipients. For example, an SSA that has member LEAs participating in pathway one can have either one teacher stipend recipient each or two teacher stipend recipients each. The full description of information can be found on pages five through six of the program guidelines. We will now go into talking about funding as it relates to the Cycle 6 Grow Your Own grant. As previously mentioned, allowable uses for Pathway 1 funding include ENT teacher and field site teacher stipends, travel to GYO Summer Institute, student transportation to and from ENT field sites, and the implementation and growth of the ENT program and organizations which includes costs for dual credit programs and establishing and growing a Career Technical Student Organization, or CTSO, through TAFI or FCCLA. Applicants will need to refer to this chart, which can be found on pages 15 to 16 of the program guidelines when outlining their proposed budget and amounts in their budget narrative. For example, an applicant may outline in their budget narrative that they will have two non-dual credit teachers and budget $12,000 of their requested funding so that each of these teachers will receive a $6,000 stipend, which meets the minimum of $5,500 and as decided by the applicant, providing additional compensation. Additionally, the applicant may outline in their budget narrative needing only $1,500 per high school for ENT field site teacher stipends. As seen through this example, specific amounts are ultimately the applicant's decision, provided that they are following the breakdown shown here. It is important to note that LEAs are expected to spend amounts that are specified in this budget narrative. For overall Pathway 1 funding, applicants will need to consider the funding caps shown here. LEAs may request up to a certain amount as determined by student enrollment size. For example, if an LEA has a student enrollment size of 6,000 students, they may request for up to $108,000 of Pathway 1 funding in their application. The suggested number of teacher stipend recipients across the board is two per high school. But as noted, LEAs may choose to select more or less if they do not go over the funding cap. Applicants will need to outline specific amounts in their budget narrative and attachment one. If applying as part of an SSA with multiple LEAs, the funding caps will apply to each individual member LEA and their respective student enrollment. The maximum of two teacher stipend recipients per member LEA still applies. For Pathway 2, applicants will need to outline their proposed budget and amounts for candidate stipends and administrative and or indirect costs for candidate programming. They will need to refer to the breakdown shown here. For example, an applicant may outline in their budget narrative that they will have six candidates completing a degree and earning teacher certification, which will then have them budget $108,000 so that each candidate receives a stipend of $18,000 to cover expenses incurred within the grant timeline. They may then budget $6,000 for administrative and or indirect costs that are associated with programming, which allows them to stay within the funding cap of $114,000, which is covered on the next slide. 
Similar to what was described for Pathway 1, the specific amounts are up to the applicant as long as they are within the ranges shown here. For Pathway 2, LEAs may request up to a total of $114,000 of funding. The suggested number of candidate stipend recipients here is 6 per LEA, but as noted, LEAs may choose to go more or less than that number as long as they do not go over the funding cap. Applicants will need to outline the specific amounts in their budget narrative in Attachment 1. If applying as part of an SSA with multiple LEAs, each member LEA may request up to a cap of $38,000 and have up to two candidate stipend recipients as mentioned earlier. After scoring and review, applicants will be selected for funding in rank order. As mentioned on the previous slides, each pathway has a specific funding structure. Up to six LEAs or SSAs with the highest total points will be awarded for each pathway, not to exceed $624,999 for each pathway. The remaining awards will be applied to both pathways to the next highest point total until funding is exhausted. Now moving into specifics around the application process and review. A few important notes to mention before going into application and review is that firstly, this webinar is a high level overview of the grant and does not capture the full extent of the grant requirements. LEAs should read the entire program guidelines before developing a grant application to become familiar with the grant's requirements and application review criteria. Some specific areas to highlight here are the program specific assurances on pages 8 through 12 and performance and evaluation measures on pages 14 to 15 of the program guidelines. All grant information can be found posted on the TEA Grant Opportunities website. A quick Google search will yield a web page that looks like this screenshot here. In the application name dropdown, select 2023 to 2025 Grow Your Own Grant Program Cycle 6 for this grant's particular information. Once you navigate to this grant's webpage, you can find all the posted documents under the Application and Support Information section, as seen in the screenshot here. Applications Part 1 and 2 and Attachment 1 will need to be submitted by the applicant. The SSA attachment must be submitted by applicants applying as part of an SSA. Application Part 1 contains a number of questions including narrative responses. Pages 4 through 6 encompass responses to questions related to how the grant will address your LEA's teacher pipeline needs, key personnel for implementation, major goals and objectives of the program, performance measures aligned to those goals and objectives, and the budget narrative. For the budget narrative, applicants will need to reference their application part two budget workbook and the application funding section of the program guidelines in order to carefully outline their proposed budget and amounts. This section should also match the attachment one pathway selection and participation. The remainder of application part one on pages seven through eight Include responses regarding a plan for long-term sustainability, stipend recipient recruitment, and the memorandums of understanding or MOUs for those stipend recipients. Please note that while some application part one questions provide a full page of space, applicants are not expected to fill the entire page. Some application tips that we thought were worth calling out include labeling responses and appropriately spacing paragraphs so that our team of reviewers can easily locate and align your responses to questions. Additionally, narrative responses should be unique to your LEA context rather than be a cut and paste of the grant requirements. Reviewers will already be familiar with the grant assurances and guidelines prior to reviewing applications. Attachment 1 is where applicants will indicate the pathway or pathways to which they are applying. Applicants will check the boxes for the pathways that they are requesting funding for. 
In the right column of the charts, they will also need to fill out the specific dollar amounts that are being requested for each allowable use. Be sure to reference the awardee spending commitments for how much is allowable for each use. Something for applicants to keep in mind is that a team of TEA reviewers will review applications and use the scoring breakdown provided in these next few slides. Here is the breakdown of possible points for these particular application sections, which constitute the standard review criteria. These can also be found on page 21 of the program guidelines. Continued on this slide are the specific review criteria and their possible points. If earned and available, applicants that receive 70% of the total standard and specific review criteria points seen on the previous slides may be eligible for priority points. The priority point categories are LEA student enrollment size, LEAs that submit a letter of support from the counselor and school administrator of the participating LEA, LEAs that are implementing any of the CCRSMs, and LEAs that have not been previously awarded in any of the Grow Your Own Cycles 1 through 4 grant funding. You may refer to the program guidelines for specifics on how LEAs can be eligible for certain priority points. Please note that optional letters for priority points must be submitted by the application deadline. To ensure a fair and consistent process, TEA will not review or consider any application documents that are received after the grant due date. Oral interviews may be used as part of the LOI review period. If used, applicants that receive 70% of the total points from standard specific review criteria and the priority points will be invited to participate. TEA will reach out to those applicants to schedule interviews if needed. You may refer to page 23 of the program guidelines for more information. The main point to highlight here is that this is an FYI only and that no action is required at this time. If my LEA was awarded funding for T-Class Decision 4, does my LEA need to reapply for this Cycle 6 Grow Your Own grant? This decision is up to the LEA. LEAs who participated in T-Class Decision 4 may still apply for Grow Your Own Cycle 6. T-Class Decision 4, or Cycle 5 of the Grow Your Own grant, was a separate application and funding process. The T-Class Decision 4 grant applied to the 21 to 24 school year, while cycle six applies to the 23 to 25 school year. For specific grant start and end dates, LEAs may visit the TEA grant opportunities page and select the appropriate application name. If awarded Pathway 1 funding, are all LEA high schools required to participate? Yes. LEAs must ensure that all of its high schools can meet the grant requirements for Pathway 1. LEAs may consider the timing and approach for recruiting students and teachers for education and training programming. According to the program guidelines, Pathway 2 covers tuition, fees, and living expenses incurred within the grant timeline. What is considered a living expense? Pathway 2 funding supports eligible candidates to become fully certified teachers. During the grant timeline, these candidates may need to cover expenses while they work to complete their degree and or teacher certification. This stipend is intended to offset such living expenses, including childcare fees, bills, and gas. LEAs may wish to consider and describe in their budget narrative how much funding they will request for candidate stipends to reasonably cover tuition, fees, and living expenses. For Pathway 2, how much funding can an LEA request per candidate? For Pathway 2, LEAs may request up to the funding cap as described on page 16 of the program guidelines. LEAs must reference the application funding section of the program guidelines and outline the proposed budget and amounts in their budget narrative. For example, an LEA of any student enrollment size may request up to $114,000 of Pathway 2 funding. In their budget narrative, 
the LEA outlines a funding request for seven stipend recipients, six recipients for $16,000 and one recipient for $18,000. The LEA will also indicate these numbers in their attachment one, pathway selection and participation. This table outlines important upcoming dates in the grant process. Please note that the last day to submit questions related to the grant application is Friday, September 9th. You may submit written questions to gyogrant at tea.texas.gov. To submit questions, please follow the process described in the grant guidelines. Questions and answers will be posted on the TEA Grant Opportunities page on September 16th. Any questions received after September 9th will not be answered by the TEA. This is to provide all applicants equal opportunity to review FAQs before applying. Thank you for viewing the Grow Your Own Grant Cycle 6 webinar. We look forward to your questions and your applications.